Hereby, I open this academic ceremony in which Pong Tung Puiva Tine will defend their academic thesis, elevating burnout in medical school, increasing a sense of belonging and collegiality in the clinical workplace. May I invite you to present a summary of your study and the conclusions of your thesis. Uh, yes, highly opponent, thank you. Good afternoon, uh, chairman and highly esteemed opponents, supervisors and all participants. Thank you all for being here today. My name is Bong Tong. I would like to present my PhD thesis in the topic alleviating burnout in medical school, increasing a sense of belonging and collegiality in the clinical workplace. The setting of my thesis is at my institution, Faculty of Medicine, Ramathipati Hospital, Mahidon University, Bangkok, Thailand. It is a great opportunity to do a research in a non-Western Asian context. I would like to uh, talk about burnout. Burnout is a psychological condition in response to chronic interpersonal stressor related to work. In 2019, World Health Organization redefined burnout as a health point of view as a syndrome caused by chronic and poorly managed workplace stress. There are three subscales, namely emotional exhaustion, of feelings of energy depletion or exhaustion, depersonalization or increased mental distance from one's job, or feelings of negativism or cyanicism related to one's job. And the last one, low personal accomplishment or reduced professional efficacy or sense of competence and achievement. Burnout has impact both uh, in professional and personal level, such as dishonest behavior, impaired college, dropping out of medical school, and mental health problem. Burnout is nowadays an epidemic among undergraduate medical students, postgraduate medical students, and physicians. The theoretical framework of job demand and resources model explains cause and consequence of burnout and well-being. Job demands refer to those physical, psychological, social, or organizational aspects of job that require sustained effort and related to cost. And job demands refer to physical, psychological, social, or organizational aspects of the job that are functional in achieving work goals, such as social support from coworkers and trainers, feedback on performance, and the freedom to make decisions. The balance of this factor may contribute to well-being, but imbalance or excessive job demands can lead to burnout. From the thesis in Chapter 2, the study focuses on excessive job demands and correlated factors related to burnout. The research question in chapter two were to what extent do pediatric residents in a non-Western setting experience burnout? And what is the relation between burnout and personal characteristic of residents' learning environment and work-related quality of life? This study was an exploratory sequential mixed methods among pediatric residents year one to three using validated questionnaire and an individual interview. The questionnaire in this study were the much large burnout inventory health service surveys and postgraduate hospital educational environmental measurement and the last one work related quality of life, all in Thai language. The results show that among pediatric residents, none of them had high levels of burnout uh, in all subscale. Emotional exhaustion and educational climate correlated with work-related quality of life. And in the interview part, the main themes related to burnout were inappropriate tasks, teachers and teaching styles, time dimensions, life crisis during training, and role expectations and work allocation quality. In conclusion, this study demonstrates the impact of inappropriate tasks teachers and teaching styles, including unsafe environment, on the incidence of burnout. 
and reducing of unsafe learning climate and reducing the effect of mistreatment in a non-Western context are needed for further study. In chapter two of uh, chapter three of this thesis, focus on burnout and negative outcome. The research question in chapter three were: What are the psychometric properties of the Thai version of the much large burnout inventory general survey for students? And what are the potentially correlation with depression, year of training, gender, and grade point average among undergraduate medical students? This study uh, was a cross-sectional survey among undergraduate medical students year two to five using validated questionnaire. There were uh, 545 responses with 76.1 uh, respond rate, percent respond rate. The inter-rater reliability was acceptable with confirmatory factor analysis demonstrate good fit index, which means that the much large burnout inventory student survey Thai versions fit with Thai context. The prevalence of burnout among medical students was 78.4%, uh, and more than half of them experienced at least one subscale of burnout. Moreover, burnout and its subscales had a positive association with the screening depression score. In chapter four, focus on a sense of belonging, collegiality, and engagement. These factors propose to be the way to increase social resilience and elevating burnout. Also from much larger hierarchy of needs, sense of belongings, uh, psychological safety, Needs, collegialities are the fundamental step to promote self-actualization of students, and they are job resource in the job demand and resource model. The research question in chapter four were to what extent is burnout related to a sense of belonging and work engagement for undergraduate medical students? And what key elements do undergraduate medical students perceive as positively or negatively contributing to promoting collegiality, engagement, and sense of belonging. This study was an exploratory sequential mixed method among undergraduate medical students year one to six using validated questionnaires and individual interviews. The questionnaires in this study uh, used basic psychological need satisfaction at work and you trade work engagement scale student version, both were validated in Thai language. There were seven, uh, 763 medical students participate in this study with a 66% response rate. The results show that burnout had a significant weak inverse association with engagement and sense of belonging which means increasing sense of belonging and engagement was associated with lowering burnout level. The key element that undergraduate medical students perceive as positively or negatively contributing to promote uh, collegiality engagement and sense of belongings were relevant tasks and learning activities, peer interaction, program design factors, dynamics of collegiality while progressing through medical school, personal stance and social skills, and the last one, safety in the learning environment. From chapter two and four findings, we will that psychological and safety in the learning environment and mistreatment were crucial factors that may contributing to burnout. Therefore, chapter five explore mistreatment which was one of the excessive job demands and uh, related to burnout and negative outcome. Research questions of chapter five was, what are the relationship between burnout and mistreatment and well-being of medical students in non-Western Asian context? This study was a cross-sectional survey among undergraduate medical students year one to five or year one to six using validated questionnaire. 
there were 681 students participated in this study with 56% response rate. 510 participants or 74.5% experienced mistreatment. The most common source of mistreatment in preclinical years were senior students or peer, and among clinical students was attending staff. However, only 8.2% of medical students reported observed mistreatment. Other findings were depression and burnout risk were significantly associated with person-related bullying, and mistreatment and unprofessional behavior were related to the risk of unprofessional behavior, which means that students who experienced uh, bullying were more often to be subject of uh, field unprofessional behavior report, such as mistreatment of others being absent without reasonable cause. In conclusion, mistreatment of medical students was evident in medical school and was related to the risk for depression and burnout, as well as the risk of unprofessional behavior. The last chapter focused on job resources and well-being in the job demand and resource model. Research question in chapter six was, what do faculty members perceive as the most important things that affect both uh, positively and negatively an undergraduate medical student's sense of belonging, engagement, and collegiality? This study was an exploratory qualitative study design among undergraduate medical trainings faculty members using semi-structured individual interviews. 20 full-time faculty members express their actions and zone of influence in promoting a sense of belonging, engagement, and collegiality in three main themes. The first theme was creating safe learning environment by having mutual respect, non-judgmental learning environments, and adjustment of the learning environment. The second theme was promoting teacher-student or student-student relationships by promoting relationships in the workplace, making students feel valuable, encouraging socialization, and stimulating student-student or resident interaction. And the last theme was program design factors by creating mentoring system and increased extracurricular activities. In summary, factors related to burnout from job demand and resources model framework were investigated in, uh, five chap in six chapters. And this thesis identified magnitude of the problem of burnout in medical school, the relationship between burnout and the new proposed intervention, how to promote collegialities, engagement, and a sense of belonging, and identify unsafe learning environments, mistreatment problems, and related consequences. Lastly, evidence from this thesis was similar to Buddha words. Buddha identified a teacher should be a true friend of a student with seven characteristics, namely lovable, respectable, creating safe space for student, being expert and continuously developing self, being a counselor, being a patient listener, being able to deliver deep discourses or treat profile subjects. And the last one, not leading or spurring on to a useless end. Uh, so this is the end of my presentation today. Uh, thank you all so much for your attention. Should I repeat it for the audience? Uh, thank you for your clear presentation and certainly the last beautiful slide from Buddha. Uh, we now start with the opposition. And the first one is Prof Professor de Rijk, Professor of Work and Health, specializing in reintegration into work. Professor de Rijk. Thank you. Dear candidates, 
my congratulations with your thesis and uh, to you and also uh, to your supervisors. Um, your thesis represents multiple methods um, and the topic is addressed from both the perspective of students and staff, which I found very nice, uh, and all chapters align very well. Even though there are some points I would like to discuss with you, at first it's about the cover, because I could understand well, the fire, the burnout, I recognize um, engagement, uh, medical students, uh, the back is also clear, but the house, what does it refer to? Can you say more about your cover? Uh, yes, a highly esteemed opponent, thank you for your interesting question. Uh, the, the house, uh, actually, uh, it should represent a medical school. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and. Uh, the reason why it's uh, inward, because uh, it could be uh, if the learning environment is not uh, in the right place or is not safety, maybe it could lead to a uh, negative outcome for uh, medical student and future physician. So uh, it represents an uh, unsafe learning environment in medical school. Thank you. All right, all right. And your thesis sets our thinking maybe a bit upside down <laughs> also. Uh, yeah, thank you. Very, very nice. Um, to continue the discussion, I would, I would like to discuss this choice about your focus on learning climate and collegiality. Uh, because from my field of research, uh, work and health, we have a hierarchy of uh, strategies. Um, in relation to prevention, and um, um, it's always recommended to take away the primary course uh, when you want to, to improve a situation. So in that respect, I would expect uh, also in line with the job demands resources model that uh, you, would f you should focus uh, um, on job characteristics and job demands in particular, or study demands. Uh, to be the primary course, mm -hmm. and um, that only the learning climate and collegiality is just something additional. And in your thesis, I found some um, um, confirmation of that line of thinking, but also the opposite. So I got a bit confused on, um, well, what to, to recommend to, uh, to improve. So what do you think about what the... Um, a real underlying cause is of the burnout scores mm. in particular. Thank you for your uh, interesting question. Uh, I think uh, the underlying cause of burnout in uh, medical school uh, from my thesis uh, highlight uh, the unsafe uh, learning environment and mistreatment in medical school and also uh, other factors uh, such as uh, uh, unnecessary duplicate work in the clinical workplace. Uh, for example, uh, uh, pediatric resident or medical students, uh, they explain that when they uh, have rotation in other hospital that has more uh, workload on the service, but uh, they didn't feel much pressure or uh, burnout uh, comparing to the institution in the uh, teaching hospital because sometimes in the teaching hospital, uh, they have to do some duplicate uh, paperwork and uh, the work that is not, uh, they feel that it's not uh, meaningful for, for them. So uh, they feel like uh, that is not uh, meaningful. So uh, they have uh, more exhaustion, emotional exhaustion mm -hmm. in, in the uh, teaching uh, hospital rather than uh, in the rural hospital when they have uh, clinical rotation outside. And, and also in the mistreatment issue, uh, they report, majority of them report that uh, they've experienced uh, mistreatment, uh, such as uh, verbal uh, mistreat uh, during uh, clinical work. And uh, sometimes they have to uh, do the has that they think that is unfair or unnecessary for, for them. So those lead to the emotional exhaustion as well. 
Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and then do you do you regard the unnecessary workload, the duplication? Mm -hmm. Do you regard that as a job demand, job resource? Yes. Um, but what, what do you regard it? Is it a job demand or a job a lack oh. of job resources? Because mm -hmm. you also refer to meaningless uh, 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 meaningfulness. Uh -huh. Uh, I personally uh, think that it is the excessive job demand uh, for for them that they have to put effort uh, to to do the unnecessary work, mm -hmm. and uh, if uh, the hospital can provide uh, the strategy to decrease that unnecessary workload, uh, it could be helpful for them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, and then you take away the fundamental cause, and is it then still uh, necessary to um, 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 to improve the the job resource, the, the mm -hmm. learning climate, or it will will it be sufficient to take a, away the underlying cause? Uh, yes, I think uh, to increase job resource could be uh, very helpful and uh, can prevent uh, the burnout problem. Uh, I think these two factors between job demands and resource, uh, they need to be like in the balanced way. Uh, so if the job demands uh, increased and, and job resource increased as well, uh, maybe a uh, student can, can balance these two factors and can uh, survive for their mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, medical school life. I'm very satisfied with your answer. Thank you. Thank you so much for your question. Thank you. The opposition will be continued by Professor Renneberg, Professor Promoting Quality and Safety in Healthcare, Maastricht UMC. Thank you. Um, dear candidate, also my congratulations for this fine thesis, um, looking into something that some of us already knew, but now it's in paper. Um, also congratulations to your supervising team and. Um, it was a pleasure to read that it's not only the Netherlands that we have these problems, but also other places in the world face these problems. Um, and it's important to gather more information on this phenomenon because I, I think it influences our, our daily practice enormously, like you described already in your talk, and it leads to dropout uh, even among students. And that's not what we want because we want to be able to keep our healthcare uh, healthy, actually. So I started reading with great interest and, and, and I got, after I read your thesis, I got back to your introduction, page nine, where you described the WHO definition and you already d talked about it in your um, talk just now. And um, well, I was wondering, is your, uh, what is your opinion about this definition? Is it still correct or should we adjust it after this thesis? Uh, yes. Uh Highly esteemed opponent, uh, thank you for your interesting question. Uh, I still agree with the uh, WHO definition of burnout that uh, it should combine three uh, domains or subskills, namely emotional exhaustion, uh, depersonalization, and low personal accomplishment. Uh, but I uh, read in many literatures that uh, some of them agree that it should be just two. Uh, dimension or, or domain or subscales of burnout, uh, especially the uh, depersonalization uh, should should be uh, dropped out. So uh, the rest to definition uh, may may be uh, enough for the definition of burnout. Yeah. And that's the definition of burnout. I, I didn't read anything there about uh, the causes of burnout, and you touched upon this in your thesis, of course. Mm -hmm. um, but then I see mainly work-related factors, and I'm uh, a little bit convinced, actually, that there are also personal factors that are very important in this, uh, do I get a burnout or not? And you, in, in page 11, you touch on it by, by naming um, family burden as a possible factor, mm -hmm. but I think there might just be many more factors that are not work-related, but do mm -hmm. have an effect on burnout. Um, maybe I give you one, and. You can help me find other ones for, like, let's say, uh, using the telephone all day long. <laughs> Is that something that, that you also came across when you were looking into this or not? 
Uh, by definition, it uh, should be the stress that uh, related to, to work in workplace by definition. But I personally think that uh, those factors could be out of workplace as well that could contribute uh, to, to burnout. And also personal factors like, uh, for example, resilience or social skill of individual also uh, can help alleviate burnout. Uh, so, uh, I personally think that uh, it could be outside of work, and, and I agree with you that uh, it could be like a personal issue, like family burden as well, but uh, if the person has uh, increased job resource in workplace or in their personal life, uh, this could help them uh, balance with the excessive job demands. Yeah, yeah, well, as teachers and as um, people who, who care for our workers, we have only influence on the job demands, actually. We mm -hmm. can influence that. But we can hardly influence what they do in their own time or how they cope or how they relax or, or go or, or treat their own stress, actually. Mm -hmm. But do you think there is an opening or a possibility that we could also prevent burnout in helping them outside mm -hmm. of the job or the job demands? Uh, thank you for your question. Uh, I think we could uh, help students to gain uh, stress coping skill or to gain resilience uh, in workplace or in medical school. And they could use this skill outside uh, medical school or in their personal life as well. So uh, I believe that uh, promoting sense of belonging, collegiality, and engagement in workplace for them could help them uh, get more resilience and they can cope with their personal life events uh, in the future. Yeah, okay. I would also like to talk to you about in chapter four, page 78, and you say um, in the future perspectives, mm -hmm. um, you also um, say what, what we should do to prevent burnout or to yeah, decrease the amount of burnout among our students. Mm -hmm. And um, as you might well know, in Maastricht, we have the CCCS principle of designing mm -hmm. yes. our education. And uh, C, one of the C says collaborative, and one of them says self-directors, about autonomy it goes. Yes. And collaborative is about working together. You think is that a good start to base our future designs mm -hmm. on? Yeah, thank you for your question. Uh, I think collaborative learning is a good start for a uh, student to uh, learn how to make good relationship with their friends, and this could help them build collegiality uh, in the future as well uh, after they uh, learn in classroom. And also it provides opportunity for a student to interact with each others and uh, create collegiality uh, outside the classroom after, after class. And also uh, self-directed learning uh, can help them promote uh, autonomy and they can feel more competence. So uh, it's in line with the uh, one of the subscale of burnout, which is low personal accomplishment. So if they have uh, autonomy, they feel that they can uh, make decision or they can be success by their own pace. This can promote uh, their feeling competence and increase uh, job resource as well. Yeah, and we, we also promote small group education. Is, how is that mm -hmm. in Thailand? Is that in Thailand also small group education already? Or? Uh, yes, we have a small group uh, classroom uh, in some uh, topics, mm -hmm. yeah. okay. uh, mostly in preclinical year. Okay, thank you very much. I'm very satisfied. Give the word back to the pro-rector. Thank you. Yes. And the opposition will be continued by Dr. Verhagen, program director, oh, sorry, assistant professor, Maastricht University. Oh, thank you. Uh, dear candidate, I'd like to congratulate uh, you and your supervisors uh, with this uh, beautiful thesis. It's a very nice piece of work, and I believe this research will also be of great value for medical programs all over the world, maybe. My first question concerns chapter one and four, 
and I would like to discuss with you some possible implications for a new medical program that we started here at Maastricht University uh, last September. So in chapter one, you stress the role of medical education in burnout, and you explained that the curriculum that focuses heavily on technical abilities, but lacks emphasis on understanding social interactions with patients and coworkers and collaboration in teams, that kind of a curriculum is more likely to cause st stress and a decreased uh, sense of well-being. Mm -hmm. And then also in your presentation, you stated to alleviate burnout, um, that medical educators can play an important role mm -hmm. and they should address the problem by raising awareness uh, among medical students by enhancing teamwork perspectives and by building a culture of appreciation by mentors and instructors. And being the coordinator of the portfolio mentor program, that's one part that interested me. Mm -hmm. um, in chapter four, you described um, the factors both for the preclinical uh, learning environment and mm -hmm. the clinical learning environment mm -hmm. um, concerning collegiality, sense of belonging and engagement. And I'd like you to select the most important ones concerning the preclinical environment, because that's where I'm involved. So concerning chapter four, could you select the most important um, factors for the preclinical environment? Uh, yes, uh, esteemed opponent, uh, thank you for your interesting question. Uh, from chapter four, uh, I would select uh, for the pre preclinical years, yes. right? Uh, I think for preclinical year, the peer interaction would be the most important factors uh, for for them, uh, because uh, uh, mostly in preclinical year, student has uh, less experience in unsafe uh, learning environment, uh, but they can form a strong relationship between peer interaction, and that could be the fundamental step uh, for them to prevent burnout in the future, in clinical workplace uh, in the future. Yes. Okay, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Um, well, then let me give um, you some explanation about our new medical program that we started here last September. Mm -hmm. um, we have a longitudinal track throughout the preclinical years that focuses on personal and professional development. And the blueprint that we made for that track contains words like well-being and prevention of your burnout. So I think uh, your thesis could be uh, a nice help, maybe for further design of this track. And before I continue with my question concerning the preclinical uh, learning environment, um, you also stated uh, in your talk that students' well-being can be enhanced by promoting teacher-student or student-student relationships. And the question is always, how can you establish this? And maybe you could once more um, summarize or select the most important factors to establish these relationships. So that's in chapter six. Uh, uh, thank you for your question. Uh, from, from chapter six, uh, for preclinical year, uh, how to promote teacher and student and student student relationship, uh, I would select to uh, maybe encourage uh, socialization between uh, student and student or uh, student and teacher, and uh, by creating mentoring system or extracurricular activities. Uh, so. Uh, that could be the framework or the space for them to build a uh, relationship with each other. Okay, yeah, thank you. I'm, I'm happy with this answer because in our new medical curriculum, we have introduced an elaborate mentoring coach program and some extra curricular activities. Mm -hmm. But then, uh, one of the other elements we want to introduce is peer group reflections and peer coachings. Mm -hmm. And... Um, a bit similar to work recently published by two Maastricht colleagues, mm -hmm. maybe you've heard of them, Van den Eertweg and Stalmeyer in BMC Medical Education, mm -hmm. an article on uh, peer group reflection and uh, students' learning and pro personal development. 
Are you familiar with that work? Yes. Okay, great. Um, do you think a peer group reflection meeting could be of benefit also in the preclinical years in our Maastricht curriculum? And I have to admit that our students already see some clinics in the preclinical years. Okay, thank, uh, thank you for your uh, interesting question. Uh, I think that uh, it is uh, a good, uh, a great opportunity uh, for them to uh, meet in the uh, intervention meeting uh, during uh, the curriculum. And uh, in this literature, uh, students will uh, have a meeting with each other with a coach who uh, help them create uh, le self learning uh, self space for them to uh, express their experience and sharing their stress experience and a coping strategy for their stress uh, during learning. So I think that is a good opportunity for them uh, not only to learn from each other how to cope with stress, but uh, also the opportunity for them to uh, share their feelings, uh, building their strong relationship between peers. And also uh, they can see the coach as a role model on how to create safe space uh, in their community. And together, if they can help each other uh, to respond to and cope with the stress, uh, this can build uh, what they call social resilience uh, in workplace, which means that uh, they can support each other when they face difficulty and uh, be able to bounce back to normal again. So uh, if medical student or uh, master student can uh, learn this skill on how to support each other and create safe space for each other, uh, they can uh, they will know how to maintain well-being for themselves and also can support uh, others. Uh, and probably they can uh, include other professionals as well in, in the future and, uh, and uh, help to create uh, social resilience, not only among a physician and also with other professionals as well in, in the future. So I think this project is brilliant. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. So it's something we're gonna start and gonna try to do. Mm -hmm. I have a second question, but I'll keep it for maybe if we do a second round. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The opposition will be continued by Dr. Verhoeven. He is a consultant pediatric surgeon at Radboud UMC and Director of Surgical Residency Training. Dr. Vroeger. Thank you. Dear doctoral candidate, first and foremost, I would like to congratulate you and your team for this superb uh, dissertation. Um, you have put in a tremendous uh, amount of hard work. We can read that. Time, dedication, maybe some family time, <laughs> a lot of energy, and it's visible in your work. Uh, and I read it with great pleasure. As a young doctor, I was sent to Groningen by Professor Scherby, sitting next to me here, to attend an assertiveness training, and he calls the surgical residency uh, res uh, assertive training, so I went there. And in this context, I dare say it was partially successful, and I will revisit this point later on. However, what is remarkable is that the percentage of surgeons that experience burnout symptoms is significantly lower for example, than, for example, ICU doctors or pediatricians. And that's true and then internationally, also nationally. It's true for residents and for the consultants. Um, and I know this was not the focus of your research, but I challenge you to brainstorm with me using the findings from your research to, to find the possible underlying causes of the difference between surgeons and pediatricians. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, uh, highly opponent. Thank you for your uh, interesting question. So uh, the difference between surgeon and pediatrician uh, regarding burnout and uh, the cause of burnout, uh, I think maybe uh, <coughs> the stress, uh, I think a surgeon can face uh, stress from uh, many factors around uh, the 
clinical workplace of like uh, stress from family and patients and the complicated uh, patients problems uh, that also the effort that the surgeon have to put in workplace uh, not only give counseling like pediatrician but also the effort that uh, they have to do the uh, surgery on and spend a lot of time in the operation theater as well so uh, these are the could be the excessive job demands for for surgeon and for pediatrician uh, mostly uh, we give counseling uh, to families uh, those are our job uh, demands and also uh, giving uh, medical treatment but not the uh, surgery in the operation room so uh, I think that is the difference in terms of uh, job demands and for job resources uh, um, <laughs> about social support <laughs> I personally think that maybe pediatrician has a more strong collegiality <laughs> among uh, friends <laughs> because uh, maybe we have more time to communicate to each other, but surgeons have to spend a lot of time in the operation theaters. So uh, I think this is the difference in terms of job resources between a surgeon and pediatrician. S uh, so this is maybe uh, the main difference between uh, surgeon and pediatrician in terms of job demands and resource causing burnout. Thank you very much. I'm satisfied. Um, personally, I think the, um, the fact that we can go to OR and focus completely on one task, mm -hmm. maybe that will help a little bit of uh, getting into the flow. But we can discuss about it with a glass of uh, champagne later on. Um, nevertheless, the percentage is still worrying, also in surgery. And even higher in the rural hospitals. And this is a little bit strange because if mm -hmm. I ask my residents, they love to operate and they do that all day in the rural areas and uh, mm -hmm. in the academic teaching hospitals, they have to write, uh, do a lot of work mm -hmm. again and again. So mm -hmm. I'm a bit confused and I'm trying to get the information you gave me in your thesis, uh, but um, maybe the rural areas um, um, demand more working hours. So mm -hmm. the workload and the amount of patients is a little bit higher. My second question um, pertains to, as expected, to boundary crossing behavior. As a surgeon, I have to talk about it. Not all behavior perceived as unsafe is necessarily unsafe. And I find that difficult sometimes. Criticism is quickly perceived as unsafe. Of course, it's the tone that sets the mood. Mm -hmm. But within surgery, we select and train for assertiveness. Assertiveness helps mm -hmm. in standing your ground by setting and maintaining boundaries. It's highly effective for those who learn and implement it, mm -hmm. but potentially problematic for those who are assigned tasks without foundational agreements and discussions. So it's good for the maybe in hierarchy, but for the resident it's um, maybe a little bit complicated. Surgeons are known for the direct way of communication and many medical students fear their surgery rotation. Mm -hmm. Personally, I found purely medical doctors much more unpleasant, but that's a, besides the point. Do you have any indication that medical students are systematically treated differently in the various rotations? And shouldn't we provide a certain training to all students? What do you think? Uh, can, uh, can I have the question again? Please? Yes. Uh, so I went to a certain tra training, but uh -huh. maybe we should provide all students before mm -hmm. they start or during their medical school mm -hmm. uh, to learn to come up for themselves. Okay. Do we think that will help or will it cause fights? Uh, I think, uh, thank you for your question. Uh, I think assertive uh, skill is very important for um, medical student and, and doctor, uh, and they should be able to speak up uh, on what is right, uh, but uh, this skill should be appropriate by not causing mistreat others as well. So 
uh, they can learn to be assertive and uh, speak up without hurting others' feeling or uh, make other people feel uh, discomfortable uh, on, on their action. And uh, it is necessary to uh, teach them this skill in uh, as early as in medical school. Thank you, Thank I agree. You. Is it time? Yes? No. Ah, later on. Thank you very much. I'm very satisfied. Thank you. <laughs> the opposition will be continued by Professor Redhans. He is Emeritus Professor in Innovative Curriculum Development, particularly in the field of human simulation. Professor Redhans. Thank you, uh, Pro Rector. Uh, dear candidates, uh, I'd like uh, also to congr congratulate you with your fine thesis. Uh, on an important topic with uh, no less than five studies, four of which already are published. Uh, and I also would like to congratulate your team of um, uh, promoters, also over there, uh, with the fine work they've done. In 1980, so 43 years ago, I had only one year to go in my undergraduate uh, clerkships. Um, I was very cynical about doctors and about uh, hospitals in general. I had no energy um, and I was extremely uh, negative about medical school. I decided to interrupt my studies for a year. I went to Norway, started working there as a farmer, got my girlfriend pregnant and came back with a uh, pregnant girlfriend um, and took again up my studies finished it very gladly uh, and uh, yeah, was happy in the rest of my life. So only by reading your thesis now, I realized I probably had a burnout after mm -hmm. my closure. And I never realized that before. So thank you very much for giving me this insight. <laughs> and based on Annie's one study, I think there's also a very simple problem for all your burnout Thai students. Mm -hmm. Go to Norway, start working <laughs> on a farm, get pregnant or, or get a girlfriend pregnant and come back to Thailand and start working again. <laughs> no, thank you, seriously. Um, I would like to ask you something about uh, chapter six. Mm -hmm. That's a study uh, with residents in which you ask their perception of actions and influences and supporting medical students' uh, sense of belonging, engagement and cordiality. And they came up with, the residents came up with a number of uh, themes uh, for example, uh, mentoring systems. Now, in the literature of uh, bringing change, uh, changing culture, of introducing innovations, mm -hmm. it's always stressed very much that the leaders of a school, of a clinical department, of mm -hmm. whatever department, are very, very important influential people. Mm -hmm. They have the skills, they can show the role model, and they can influence uh, the, the, the culture. Mm -hmm. um, so successful changes should be done there and the views of those people should be uh, investigated as well. Now you investigate the opinions of undergraduates in chapter 4 mm -hmm. and residents in chapter 6. And I wonder, is this the good level? Did you not investigate the wrong level? So were you familiar with literature which more or less stressed that the higher in the school or the higher in the department, those are the important people you, uh, you got to reach. Mm -hmm. um, and if you are, why did you then take upon the study with the residents? Uh, yes, a highly esteemed opponent. Uh, thank you for your question and uh, sharing your experience. Uh, I start uh, chapter two among uh, residents and uh, the reason I why I start with the resident because uh, at that time I experienced that a resident in my institution has uh, dropping out uh, every year. So uh, from that problem, I start to investigate uh, on the burnout among uh, resident first, and then expand to undergraduate medical student and uh, interview medical teacher to uh, how to promote sense of belonging and uh, collegiality. And I uh, also agree with you that uh, the leader level uh, in the medical school uh, also very important, and uh, it should be the uh, further study on 
uh, this group of people as well on how they can influence to uh, alleviate burnout in, in medical school. So, so your reason why you started with working residents is that, that you were more curious how much percentage of them is suffering burnout. Is that the reason? Uh, yes, because uh, the dropping out rate among residents at that time uh, is uh, high and, uh, and there are uh, drop out every year for mm -hmm. like uh, three or four years uh, every year. So I start to uh, explore uh, in this group. Yeah. Thank you. I, I can understand that, that your findings uh, among your colleagues, uh, so uh, probably also in Thailand, but also uh, as, you, as it's published international, is, uh, is quite important. Mm -hmm. To what extent are you, if, if you talk about an impact of a, of a PhD brood booklet, uh, to what extent are you, um, are you have, do you have plans to more or less yeah, go up to a higher level or plan it, uh, um, do some PR in the, the subject in, in your region or in Thailand? Do you have any plans for that? Uh, for expand uh, uh, investigation, uh, I just uh, published another uh, article or study, but among uh, pediatric residents in uh, all over the country, not not in only in my institution. Mm -hmm. uh, th that is the uh, most recent uh, pu publication uh, of mine, and uh, also I do uh, expand to the uh, mistreatment uh, in pediatric uh, all over the country as well, but uh, not in the leader level uh, yet. But I agree that uh, it could be the next study of mine in the yeah. future. Yes. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I'd, I'd stimulate you to, um, to, to present your, uh, your findings to leaders, even in your, in your own hospital, to leaders of the department or to medical school, mm -hmm. and, 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 and make them clear on the subject. Uh, thank you very much. I'm, I'm satisfied with the answer. Thank you. Your microphone. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, the opposition will be continued by Dr. Van der Kant. She is Assistant Professor Maastricht UMC and Academy. Dr. Van der Kant. Thank you very much. Dear candidate, thank you very much. Um, I would like to congratulate you and your research team for the valuable research that you have conducted. And it provided me with new insights and interests. And I read it from three perspectives, as an epidemiologist, as a teacher, and also as a confidential advisor for residents. And obviously, my attention as a confidential advisor for residents was directly attracted to chapter five, in which you have studied mistreatment in medical students. And I would like to discuss with you um, three parts of this chapter, the high prevalence, the low report rate, and a possible solution. To start with the high prevalence, uh, we have studied mistreatment in residents and medical students ourselves and found percentages of one in three or one in five mm -hmm. residents or students, which actually we found already very impressive. But I was blown off my feet when I read the prevalence that you have studied and you have found 75% or 74.5%, meaning three in four medical, student, medical students suffer from mistreatment. Um, and I was really impressed about that, and I would like to discuss with you on that. First, uh, maybe the validity of this number. Uh, I saw that uh, you had a very high response rate, um, almost 80%, but only 50% was included in your analysis. And could you reflect whether that could have influenced this high number? Uh, yes, uh, esteemed opponent. Uh, thank you for your interesting question. Uh, I think uh, because I use negative ac uh, questionnaire from uh, original from uh, United States of America, and I use this in, in Thai context, uh, even though I validate this questionnaire, but uh, in the perception of Thai people, maybe uh, we, we might have uh, le less sensitive to uh, mistreat definition. Uh, Therefore, uh, we might uh, experience mistreatment, but uh, in our real life, we 
did not aware that uh, we have this uh, problem in in our situation. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, the high rate uh, we we could experience high rate, but uh, might not feel that these are the big problem or uh, or has a really much negative consequence uh, because I think the perception of mistreatment in uh, different contexts may be uh, different as well. Okay, so you say it's more uh, over-representation maybe, or is it an, maybe an under-representation, this number? Uh, I think uh, the number is uh, accurate, but okay. the, the problem from, from the high uh, prevalent rate may be lesser than uh, in Western country uh, because we might get used to uh, this mistreatment. Uh, mostly are like, for example, verbal mistreat in, yeah. in daily life. Uh, that is the most common uh, that's seen in, in our context. So I think uh, this uh, number may come from uh, this kind of uh, mistreatment. And uh, I believe that it is accurate prevalence, but maybe cause us less uh, negative consequence okay. than, than, than other contexts. Yeah. So you had a high prevalence on one side. On the other hand, you had a very low report rate, only 8% mm -hmm. of the students daring mm -hmm. to report this mistreatment. Mm -hmm. um, I was wondering, could you reflect on what, were, uh, what do you think are the most important barriers to report mistreatment? Uh, thank you for your question. Uh, I think maybe they don't think this is the problem. As I uh, mentioned, that they may get used to uh, this <coughs> circle of mistreat uh, in, in the culture. Uh, mm -hmm. For example, uh, they might experience some uh, abusive uh, verbal reaction from uh, their peers or their uh, staff, but they might think that it is the culture of uh, medicine or something in, in medical school. So uh, they might not perceive this as mistreatment, so they not, uh, did not report uh, this event. Mm -hmm. And some of them reflect that uh, sometimes they report, but the system is not quite good now, and they don't see the uh, response from this report okay. system. So eventually they will not report it. But uh, now uh, we have another study to explore uh, the under-report rate, and we try to find the cause okay. of under-report among medical students in our institution. That's good to hear. So you yes. say it's part of the cultural uh, uh, cultural part, it's also a st uh, the structure. Maybe we did not mm -hmm. organize it that well to report. What mm -hmm. is a possible solution, uh, in your opinion, to uh, lower down this impressive number? Uh, thank you for your question. Uh, I think we, we have to uh, break the, the circle of mistreatment by uh, starting from uh, raising awareness of the mistreatment problem among uh, medical students or in medical school. And then uh, we should uh, build the reporting system and also uh, try to implement on how to manage this problem, both from the mistreat and mis mistreated and mistreat uh, person as well. Uh, there should be consequence from both sides and mm -hmm. report back to uh, medical student. Yes. Nice, Thank good. Um, yeah. Oh. Mm -hmm. Dear candidate, the time appointed for defending your thesis has passed now. The degree committee will now withdraw and to discuss the quality of your thesis and your defense. I request that you and your company await the results because we certainly will, will come back. <laughs> Thank you.
The PhD defense has now ended. The degree committee will debate the candidate's performance behind closed doors. This process usually takes about 10 minutes. is tied long road i don't waste no time break rules because fate decides with the team and we chase the light i make a move fall down shake it off i hate to lose that branch break it off no room for negativity praise and love prepare for deep park because we're taking off Hit the mileage,
Dear candidate, the degree committee here present has assessed the quality of your thesis and your defense. In view of its positive verdict and taking into account your previous qualification, the degree committee has decided to grant to you the degree of doctor. Professor Van Moek is authorized to confer upon your this academic distinction in accordance with Dutch university custom. I invite Professor Van Moek to take the floor. Do you promise to work in accordance with the principles of scientific integrity at all times to be careful and honest, transparent, independent, and responsible? I promise. By the authority vested in us by law, in a conformity with the decision of the committee here present, I hereby confer upon you, Hong Tong Uranite, the degree of doctor, and grant all rights attached to it by custom and law. As evidence by this, by, of this, I now present you with a degree certificate signed by the rector, the secretary, and the other members of the committee, and affixed with the official seal of the university. You can come closer for pictures if you want. Dear Dr. Bonto, Dr. Puranite, congratulations um, on very successfully completing uh, your PhD today. I think we're very proud. Um, I still remember that we embarked on this journey together. You remember when? You think when that was? You remember when we embarked on this journey together? We met in Bangkok in January 2017 for a conference which you co-organized. Um, and it was in March 2017 that we first exchanged emails, first on a smaller team on the topic for your thesis, which first was related to feedback and assessment. You later switched to burnout um, with Dr. Jamio Busari, a pediatrician like yourself and Sylvia Heinemann and myself. Um, as you realize, the, the proposal was very quickly approved uh, with only minor revisions, so compliments for that uh, from the start in November that year. And after a really enjoyable, respectful, and very complimentary collaboration um, with you, with the team, I think we can all say we really enjoyed the trip we undertook together. Um, we should also acknowledge that it was not the easiest time to do research. Um, the COVID pandemic, it interfered with data gathering, with writing up results, with analysis. Um, but nevertheless, despite these difficult times, you also managed in the meanwhile to be awarded the very prestigious, I would say, Aspire to Excellent Award in Student Engagement by Amy. I think you should deserve an applause for that. It's, it's indeed a very international a recognition of um, uh, excellence in medical education. Um, from in the five years that you did your PhD, you managed to write five papers, as Professor Rettenhans already alluded to. Four of which been, has been, have been published, one to follow. You also explained that you, there are many papers to follow. You, don't, you will not start doing research uh, after your PhD. I think you can very, be very, very proud of your achievement so far, Pantong. Um, but indeed, the team is very sure that this is not the end point of your educational adventure, uh, your educational research travel, but is the starting point for further steps in both your career and personal development. Um, I think it's, it's more than fair to also congratula congratulate your family. 
your husband, your children on this achievement. Because much of, this t of the time that you invested in your thesis must have come from your personal time, not from your professional time. Um, I also want to congratulate your colleagues at Maidol University, at your hospital. Um, you should explain the results of your thesis to them and talk to the leaders in charge. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm sure the destination of reaching your PhD data would not have been reached without their full support. Mm -hmm. um, so thank you for that. Um, you, well, it, it's been a, a relay, as you explained in the acknowledgement section, an estafeta, as we call in Dutch. Um, the estafeta, we sometimes witness the present of some of your kids, but I never realized that all their names starts with, start with a P. <laughs> um, which was fun to see. Mm. The other thing I would like to mention is that the team, as well as the opponents, really appreciate that you and, uh, took the, the, the um, that you traveled to uh, Maastricht to the venture thesis in person and not do it online. So thank you for that. That's really enjoyable. Um, also, again, I did it previously as well. Uh, on behalf of the, the team, Jamiu and Sylvia and myself, I would also like to extend my gratitude to all the assessment committee members and opponents for asking questions today. Um, Bong Tong, I will finalize. I had to stick within six minutes, so I hope I did. Mm -hmm. Again, congratulations on your PhD and a job really, really well done. Dr. Puzari, you want to say something? Because you are a little bit far away. Oh, we have now. Can you hear me? Yes, now it's good. Okay. Um, I just want to congratulate you, Pong Tong, for this unique work you have put down together especially um, as a pediatrician and knowing what it means to uh, conduct research alongside your clinical work. Um, Professor Skerper can uh, allude to that because I did a similar uh, uh, feat. I think it's unique being a mother, uh, um, a wife and a clinician. I respect you, I admire you, and I want you to enjoy this moment. Um, the work has just started so um, sometimes you think that when you've got your PhD, you're done. No, the work is just starting. So congratulations and enjoy the moment. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Buzari. Um, now also on behalf of Maastricht University, I also can congratulate you and your team and your family. Um, so the ceremony is now ending. Uh, we all go to the reception area, but first we go on the pictures with you on the stairs. Thank you. 